Hello, I'm Neverdot. Welcome to day 10 of Inktober. Today we're going to be, I've already done the sketch actually, so today we're going to be finishing the drawing, inking, painting, all breaking the laws of Inktober because it's all digital. I'm a terrible rebel, but I've already sketched a nice little bird in a bucket with a crab. So what are they doing together? Who knows? Let's find out with today's Inktober. We've got the sketch going and we're going to start uh, with an anchor point usually I usually start with the eye or in this case the beak and drawing the parts over top of everything first as usual I'm working on many different layers I try to keep crossing strokes on different layers so that bucket is not touching the bird at all which means I can just cut out the parts that overlap I'm using a ruler <laughs> for the ore there uh, having a tablet with a screen helps because you can just put a ruler actually on it and draw with it. I often don't know what an ore looks like, so hopefully that's realistic. And we're just trimming away the little bits and pieces we do not need. And don't forget any. I would never forget any. That would be impossible. Don't look for when I forget one later on. And again, I do not know if bucket handles connect that way but hopefully I have a problem there because the bucket handle is too low it would be hitting the water at this point so right now I'm trying to figure out where does the water hit for the main bucket and then where would it hit for the the handles because I, I wasn't really thinking about the handle actually getting in the water but I guess it is so that's actually nice it adds a nice touch I find and it was not something I was planning to do but there we go. A crab I often avoid choosing as a character because anything with telescopic eyes like that, telescopic, uh, is a little bit awkward to make looking cute. They don't they don't usually look cute. So this one I, I did get a sort of a stockier, stubbier eye, which I think gets the effect of it a little bit better than like a snail's eye, which I tried before and I didn't quite like it. We're going to throw in a lantern, and again, I don't really know what lanterns look like. I should have looked up reference material, which I do if it's more complicated. In this case, I think I'm just going to enjoy my mock realistic uh, lantern. And here I'm shockingly doing those freehand, those straight lines, and I'm pretty impressed with myself because I can't draw straight or circle shapes uh, particularly well, as you can see there. Oh, it looks like I'm not going to fix it. Great, go me. I intend to have four supports, and that fifth support over there is clearly just a line because I was thinking this was a glass lantern, but I, I'm actually second-guessing that later on. And we put on a little, I don't know how that's held on. That's either string or iron chains, but I'm not drawing a chain, so it must be string, which means it's flammable, which means it's going to burn off the crab's handle soon. Oh, and I've forgotten to cut out a line, so there goes me. I'm really smart. Ah, uh, saving. Now just thickening up some of the lines. Sometimes they're a little bit too weak. When you're drawing with this varying thickness level line, you can wind up with sort of weak lines when you're zoomed in because it looks pretty big when you're zoomed in, but when you zoom out, oops, you've got completely inconsistent lineage. I'm flipping over to the drawing painting now. We're not decided on the bird's color. I wanted to avoid yellow because too many birds are yellow. And again, the yellow beak is also pretty traditional, so I went with a black beak because uh, real birds actually have different colors on them than that. And at this point, I think I'm realizing that that little uh, string was not properly there. I go, I fixed it. Yeah, I didn't cut it out. Mistake. Also, not going with a red crab. I'm going to do a blue crab, because I think crabs are actually often blue, sometimes brown. There are blue crabs. Go look at the internet. I mean, don't, don't Google crabs, because, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so this blue crab is looking happy and again the bird I don't want to leave just a solid color because solid colors are boring so we're going to give it some texture the shape of the collar also helps to give a bit of a feel of the 3d aspect of the bird like that its neck is round uh, yeah I like it. it looks a bit more I don't know like it's from some particular country other than just being from the store now one thing I don't like is that the buckets flat gray so we're going to add some what I'm hoping is rust. At the end of this, I don't think it does look like rust, but it's better than having it just a solid gray. So we're going to 
experiment with a few different things and I'm getting a bit of the black line affecting the um, painting there which maybe I like maybe I don't like I'm trying to muddy up the the bucket to make it look more dirty more worn more interesting give it a bit more character because if you just buy the bucket from the store throw it in the ocean throw a bird in it and a crab I mean what's the history there not much we want the sense that this bucket has been with them for a long time this is their main mode of travel and yeah they, they like getting around in their bucket with their ore and then how did they store the ore how did they store the the lantern and why am i shading already have i done the fire i haven't lit the torch yet that's interesting i guess i'll do that later my typical shading technique of just drawing on a highlight layer uh, set to hard light uh, so that i can shade without worrying about changing the base color so i can fix things when i inevitably make a mistake and the lantern's going to be the light source so it's going to cast away from where he's holding which means casting shadows on things behind him that shadow there is probably dead wrong but whatever as long as nobody questions it or watches this video and the bird shadow may or may not be realistic i keep having to check and fix things yeah it's just gonna cast in that way again those shadows are probably way off realism but the top of the head here i is getting tricky because i'm not sure where i want the shadow to cut off because i need a strong sense of this is a restricted light source it's not a big global light source like the sun so you're not going to broadly illuminate the figure it's going to be sort of closely lit which means all that light up there it has to go there we go and it's a very small light actually so where and it's going to be dark all around where the light can't get to it and i have to throw a fire in there that's actually a highlight although it just looks like paint and then i'm going to ghost in some things i like that yeah the long casting shadows like that are effective so now I should be throwing some fire in there. Let there be light. Okay, good. This fire I'm not impressed with, but it's very small. And when I actually output this to the final product, no one's going to see it. I like. I have to name every layer specifically what it is because if I have a layer that says layer 3, it bothers me to no end because I don't know what it is and I have to go twiggle it on and off to see where it is, what it is. Wastes my time this is giving a nice warm effect uh, to everything that's lit up by it because it's a you know a rosy kind of glow not a cold glow and the surrounding colors around it are all cool so this is complementing it or contrasting it random terms soliloquy and yeah so they're alone on a cold night with a nice warm torch uh, jumping into krita to do the background and i like i really like the sponge brush here it's quite nice for giving that edge effect because i'm not filling in the entire scene uh just a circle spotlight kind of thing so I, it gives me a very nice uh effect around the edge also this brush is great for doing a fog effect which i always look for an excuse to lay down fog and we're i'm just deciding here whether or not how much i want to be done in crit uh, versus painter because the reflections here I'm also playing around with. Do I want reflections? Do I want just the dark sea to not reflect? And I think, yeah, I mean, the reflections add quite a lot. So let's get all reflecty. And let me remember my high school physics and how lines of light reflect back on the eye. Yeah, it should go back that way, not continue the, <laughs> the handle. And yeah, the, hand, the, the broom stick there should be going out. That's a or uh, I've got a wrong shadow over there underneath, but whatever. And yeah, I'm just going to cut it off because I don't want to have a full full length reflection, which is what it was going to be in a second. And it still looks a little bit too boring. The background's too flat, too blue. The front ground, foreground is too blue as well. So we're just going to put a bit of a foggy mist on the lake, as it were, to make it look more mysterious. And I don't know, Sherlock Holmesy, I guess. They're hunting the hound of the Baskervilles. So that's the final drawing. Um, I hope you like it. Thank you for joining me for Inktober Day 10. I hope you enjoyed the drawing of the bird and the parrot and whatever it is with the crab. I hope they figure out what they're doing on the pond. I hope whatever is catching up to them. Well, probably doesn't catch up to them actually because it's probably bad. So, for next time, 
keep drawing or start drawing, go get a piece of paper and draw your own thing. Draw a monster that's chasing them, or maybe it's just not a monster. Maybe it's just something totally normal, like a bottle of Coke that's just floating around and they're thinking it's going to kill them, but it's actually just Coke. Have fun. Be awesome. Draw something cool. See you next time. Goodbye. going to want to do whenever you finish a really good drawing is just put a big old red smiley face right right in the mist he's just just so happy and you know what's great smiley faces with noses because noses oh look at that nose don't don't put noses on don't don't put noses on smiley faces They're, it's disgusting don't don't do it don't don't do it